Okay, I have the motion blue bun and I'm looking at the M drive. So there's two files that I want to look at. So I want to go ahead and open this one and see what is the difference. And then I also want to open uh, this other one. So I have this one open and then I want to come over here and open the other one. So new file open and want to open the config system from the motion blue. See if there's anything different that from other from uh, from other stuff. So we look here, there is nothing talking about boot up to USB. Whenever you see a prompt sign, mean is is a comment out. That means it's not active. The one you want to look at is the one that right here. Those are so this is the only thing it have. And let's see, that's it. Everything else is marked out. There's nothing here. There's nothing about overclock. Nothing on here. So the config configuration system is standard. Now, what's the difference between the command line on this one? So let's take a look. So in order to make this, you can see it better. What I recommend is uh, have the enter key like so. So everything is in one, one, you know, you don't have to scroll back and forward. You can see everything, but I don't recommend you save it like this because it might create a problem. So you want to leave everything Look like there's more line to on um, this micro SD card than anything. So this is the original uh, boot up from an SD card, and this thing right here is exactly the same over here on my hard drive. Here the same, here exactly the same, and so on. And here wait for three minutes, level three, console zero. So that and that same. Now here is still the same two that are highlighted booted from the other one same. Logic is the same. So and then this last line is the same. So the only thing that is different is this one is saying that user Raspberry Pi configure resize.sh. Hmm, interesting. So this actually resize your hard drive to see whatever, like if you have a hard drive. So this is a good one to have this. Uh, I wonder where this file is because what it did is when the first time boot up, it's going to run this. So it's going to take whatever you have and max out the size of your either SD card space, you know, SD card storage or the hard drive storage. So that's how it utilize the holes this okay then after that then this thing is get removed so i didn't really do nothing on the, so you can actually burn the sd card uh image the motion blue directly to uh to the hard drive and then it should automatically boot up to the hard drive you don't need another sd card so i just burned this just to look at to see is there anything different? So the only thing I see is this extra line number 15, which is not here. And let's look at the SD card, see if there's anything in there that have that file. So we want to make a copy of it. So anytime if we burn an image, a brand new image to a hard drive, we have no way of maxing out the, the space. And that apparently uh, Motion Blue he created that that special SH file that actually increased that space. So let's see if we can find that one. It's called the uh, initial resize. Okay. Let's see if we could find that file. We could open it up, check it out, what's inside. No, it's not in here. There's no dot sh in here. So I guess when you boot up, you have to f somehow find that file if it doesn't get deleted.
So the guy who created the motion blue, he have uh, added that extra uh, SH file that it actually increased the size. So there's nowhere here in here that have that file. So it's inside the uh, inside the uh, the partition of the Linux uh, size of it. So we can't really see it. Ah, interesting. Okay, that's cool. All right, maybe we boot it up. Let me see. Let me see if I can find it because I do have Motion Blue on my other machine that is is open. Let me see if I could uh, open up that network drive. Okay, let me type in the see if I could find that file. Uh, is RetroPie and what does that script say? Screen so we could see it. Uh, the script is actually. Let me open up the notepad again. Okay, it said user library ret retropy config. Retropy config. So let's look at config. Let's see if we can find a folder called retro. Start with an R. No, it is not in config folder. That's the only R we have. Uh, let's see. The, only, the other way to, to, to look at it is we open up this program called the Win SCP because all the file that we cannot see, it will you are able to open it. So I'm gonna log into that. And we are going to search for that file. So we're going to find a file. Uh, let's don't find it from here. Let's go all the way up to the all the way up to the front. All the way up to the root prompt. And then we are going to look for that file. Where's the text file? Notepad, okay. Notepad, and we're gonna look for this file. Let's see if we could find it. And if we could, we're gonna save that file. You know, save a copy of it. Maybe we could add this to all the uh, micro SD card, and maybe we could have it automated uh, resize any image we put on a hard drive. Maybe it will work. But so far, what I find out is that there's if you if you get the image from somebody already created image, this one is not somebody already created. This is just like an operating system, but have artwork, artwork and uh, design already set up for you. And also, you could uh, switch to a track mode, so you could create a virtual uh, arcade machine and throw the ROM in there, and will create all the art the all the stuff for you only thing you have to create is the the snap picture and you have to include that include the artwork the box artwork but every the theme everything else is already being created so so the good thing is that motion blue is kind of nice uh you could also upgrade to the latest firmware and it's easy to to make it work, you don't. You could just throw it in, and it automatically will work. Uh, some some of the other people's work. If you're trying to put stuff in there, and they don't have, they haven't created like a Neo Geo CD, and you put it in there, it's not gonna work. So he already configured a lot of stuff in Motion Blue, and so he he also make it where if you boot up to uh, if you put an image on a hard drive, you automatically use you utilize all the space. So we're gonna look for that file and see what is it, and we'll be right back. Okay, look like it found it. It found it in this location. It said user lib lib and retro dash config. So it's in the same location, and this is the file that we were looking for. 
So I'm going to go ahead and stop the search and see if we could by clicking on it. Why won't we stop? There you go. Let's click on it, see if we take you there. Okay, so it take us there. There's only one file that he had put it in here. So this file is the file that is from the notepad from the config config file. It tell it that uh, in the command line, not config. Config that nothing change. But let me take the, let me take that back. It's in the command line. Yeah, I'm looking at the command line right here. Yeah, is is added in the command line saying do this. Okay, in the beginning of the when you first boot up. So this is a file. So I want to make a copy to uh to my uh location. And I want to uh actually I'm going to open up a notepad and save it in my notepad. Uh the the exact location so I won't forget where where I found it. So this is for motion uh blue uh first boot, boot up uh in the command what is it called command line dot txt you have this file located in M E M E D I A U S B Jewel and user U S R L I B and it's in R A S P I dash C O N F I G. Uh, excuse the background noise because my my daughter is playing this, uh, computer. I think Revel Evil game. And it's kind of scary, so she's kind of screaming, making noise back there. All right, so this is. I'm gonna go back to the config notepad, and I'm gonna copy this line. So it's actually called CMD line text. CMD. Okay. So it's CMD. I've got the D. Line dot text and. So you will, you will find this file in, in this location. Okay, and the end of this file you will see this okay so we are going to save this file in my word document and call this a uh, resize information on motion blue CMD line dot X. So I'm saving cell so note so I know. So let's minimize that and let's let's go ahead and copy this to my uh, document and then we're just going to transfer it over here. So now I have a copy of this and we could actually open it and see what it looked like. So it's actually I'm mounting and then boot to remount and we boot. So boot the partition number, echo. So it is doing partition stuff.
So I think this this is the the command that uh that was created by him that that actually we partition utilized the whole disk space. Wow, that's cool. That's good information. Fine. So that means if I was to burn the image using any image on the first time, I need to well maybe not first time maybe a second time because if I boot up first time it's not going to do this. So I need to add this 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 file into that directory and hopefully it will work because if it doesn't work that means that he has some other command other stuff that is in his uh, in his file that we need to maybe copy over it doesn't look like we need to copy anything it's just a, a plain Linux command uh, So those of you who is interested in it and see how he, he did his, maybe uh other people who created image, like I don't know, they I don't know their image will do the same thing, but apparently his image is able to take uh take a existing hard drive and utilize the whole hard drive space without you creating a two partition, one SD card and one hard drive. His, you don't need to do that. But if you're using virtual memory, virtual image from virtual man, you will have to do that in order for it to read the secondary hard drive, which is USB hard drive. Okay, and that USB hard drive need to have a power. You cannot use a flash drive. Okay. Uh, so this is how it, he set it up. So that's pretty cool to know. All right. So the next thing we're gonna do uh, before we end this whole thing is. We already went over how to burn the image. You have to just pick any image and burn it. That's pretty much it. Okay. And second thing that we went we didn't go over is that uh will will Raspberry Pi be uh four gigabyte? Will it boot up directly from a hard drive? Using the same idea with the uh, motion blue, would it will it boot up to the USB power up hard drive, meaning that you have to have a power. Okay, so we're gonna go to the back and plug everything into Pi 4, and we're gonna boot it up and see if it boot up to uh, the hard drive without the SD card for the first time. Never plug it in before, no idea will work or not. Doesn't know if the Raspberry Pi is defected or not. So we're gonna go and check that out. So this will end the conclusion of me trying to figure it out about the setup. There is one extra line that's added. Okay, so there's nothing you have to do. You just burn the blue motion blue into directly to a hard drive, and it should automatically boot up from the hard drive. As we based on what you see, I tested it boot up to the hard drive. I didn't have to do anything to the hard drive. I didn't have to boot up from an SD card and then switch it to a hard drive. It automatically boot to hard drive. Okay. And that worked for Raspberry Pi 3B plus. Do not I'm not sure about Raspberry Pi 4B. So we're gonna test it now and you guys could be the witness about on it and see it your first time, see if, if it work or not. I heard the based on their their website, they're working on it, but it didn't say they fix it or not, but don't know. We're going to check it out right now. Okay. All right. Let's go check the computer.